listen to this fucking Jane Eyre soundtrack. Um, I tweeted out 20XX. Um, yeah, I saw that. It wasn't originally called that. That's why I didn't realize in my library. I, I've had the game. It, like I backed it in 2014. Yeah. And it went early access soon after that. And I got the code and made sure I had access to the game. But I don't want to play an early access game. Most times. Most times I have no interest in that. I just I finish it, then I'll play the game. Especially if I know it's going to be something I might play one time and be done. Um, but I do remember, like, yeah, seeing this roguelike Mega Man, the game that you could play co-op. That's what pulled me in, was the co-op feature. Right. Because um, I thought that'd be cool. Um, I mean, we, were, we weren't even doing this in 2014, were we? No. No. Yeah, so that was probably me thinking about playing it with the uh, kids. Um... And yes, John, I will let you be the red zero-looking guy. I was about to say, I called <laughs> dibs on him, because he's he's clearly the uh, zero knockoff. There's very it's... clearly a zero and a Mega Man ripoff yeah. in that game. Yeah, because one has all melee attacks, the other one has all ranged attacks. And they seem to be red and blue to match. Yes. <laughs> uh, and the, the, the soundtrack is could have been a Mega Man soundtrack. Uh, if you told me it would have been like, oh yeah, that was from Mega Man 5, I would have believed you. Do you need like a super jump ability or Yeah, what you can get. But I think that's actually just the library. These guys are called Fleeman. Apparently. Huh. What does Dark Metamorphosis do for you? When you shed blood, you get hit points back. So when you take damage? Uh, when you kill somebody. Oh, okay. But they have to actually bleed. Can't be like a zombie or some shit like that. No floating brain matter juice. Yeah. What's in this fucking Jane Eyre soundtrack? Um, speak, okay, speaking of, of clean air, um, I did my thing that I do after, uh, I play a particular game that had some reason to be provocative or thought, and that is, like, binge on critique videos and things like that, so I did that right. for, uh, um, Life is Strange. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and... Found some real credible uh, evidence that the ending of the game was changed, or maybe there was a third ending removed. That as the game got popular, yeah, um, I'm interested in this because there's a prequel and there's a sequel coming. Yeah, and the prequel is going to be Chloe and Rachel. There'll be no Max. Okay, so this will be the time of Chloe and Rachel. Yeah. Um, and it looks like it's them investigating the Blackwells. Okay? So I don't know that it's going to go right up to the events of her going missing. Because um, it's like... Chloe is starting out several years younger. She's starting out at 16. Right. Okay? <laughs> Thank you! So I don't think it's going to run up into the events of the other one. Uh, but they are at that barn, and they're investigating Blackwell shit going on and all that. Yeah. Um, and so somebody had laid out that um, a pretty convincing case, convinced me at least, that there was another ending to this shit involving the Blackwells that um, got pulled out to become the story of this prequel uh, because it could be fast content. They didn't have to whole write a whole thing. Yeah. It could. They could tie in the things that were already left in clues. So it's it's going to be um, going to have continuity. Right. But this whole idea of Jefferson as the evil guy was sort of last minute invented. Um, it seemed last minute invented. 
So uh, the th first thing is is that um, there was dialogue not used, but on on disc or download or whatever yeah. in game files for Nathan Prescott. Yeah. Um, a lot of this was at the point where you beat him up. Yeah. Where he tells you, you guys are all dead anyway. I've seen the tornado. It's going to kill you all. And you'll get yours, right? Yeah. And then there's another sequence that this implies there's some dialogue between him and Max. Where she's basically like, what do you mean you've seen the tornado? And he's like, I have dreams. There, you know, this whole city is going to be destroyed. You all will see. It's coming. The day is coming. Um, and shit like that. Uh, so that's the content not in the game that's been found. The rest of it was extrapolated from, well, if that's here and wasn't used, then what is there? And we talked about this when we saw it. Like, the dad's letters... The destiny crap? Yeah, we're not just the normal, I'm a rich dad, and one day you're going to take over my business empire? But until then, I don't give a shit about yeah, you. Yeah, these were like... Yes, I've gone down to the room and saw the things that you had to see, too, and it was disturbing when I saw it, but we don't need to understand our destiny and take our place. So it's like, that's a little bit creepier shit. Yeah. There, there were um, uh, runes and shit on the lighthouse. Like, somebody had put runes and markings on the lighthouse. Um, that wasn't Max. Max didn't do that, right? It's not just fucking graffiti. Um, and shit like that. So, there was a lot to say that, yeah, the actual intended ending was that... Oh, yeah, the Prescotts are onto some dark power shit. Um, and maybe that more ties into Max's time travel powers or something like that going on. I don't know. It wasn't speculated whether or not, um, Max causing the tornado. Yeah. Um was to be changed, whether it was like now the Prescotts are summoning it, they're bringing it here. It seems like a lot of that was leading toward um those endings. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but that there would have been a confrontation with, you know, some demonic Prescott Senior cult ritual thing going on that became a photo lab. A million dollar photo lab. Sure. You know? Why not? Um, then the other uh, video I watched, which was um, uh, Innuendo Studios, uh, they did This Is Phil Fish. If you've ever seen that video, it's an excellent fucking video. Um, have you ever watched that one? No, okay. I haven't. So the, the point in, in that video is. Um, Breaking down, like, the anger toward Phil Fish. And the treatment of Phil Fish. Um, and also sort of laying out, like, this is what he's perceived as, but this is the truth of Phil Fish, right? And Phil right. Fish is the guy who did, um, uh, the pixel game. What the fuck? Uh, that platformer. Um, shit, I can't remember it. You know what I'm talking about? So it's the 2D platformer, but it rotates in 3D space. That puzzle-like platformer game. Oh. It's not coming to mind. Got a hot moment here. Fez. That's it. He's the guy that did Fez. Um. But he's kind of an asshole. Um. And, and that has caused a lot of, um, people calling him out and shit. Yeah. Um, and it's also caused a lot of articles and inks being written about what, how much of an asshole he is, right? Yeah. Um, but in the, in the Windows Studios video, though, what he kind of gets into is that, um, Phil Fish started out on um, a set of indie forums that was pretty popular uh, among indie developers. And he was the same Phil Fish. He was an asshole then, too. Yeah. But more importantly, the kind of asshole he was was calling out shit talker. 
Like, he wasn't an asshole to anybody making a game. He was an asshole to somebody that came in the forums and started shit-talking about how they knew how everything worked and how everything should be and be fixed. Um, so he was kind of respected in the indie forums because he kind of called out the people who were um, being more negative toward other game developers, right? Right. The thing is, is that Phil Fish never changes, right? Except that he gets famous, and then there's the unwritten rule of you're not acting like we think famous people should act. Right. And and therefore you have committed, you know, a sin. Um, even though Phil Fish never changed. Like, even when he's an asshole after Fez, he's still calling someone out for shit-talking. Yeah. Um, in the way that he would in a forum. And the other thing he breaks down, which is really good too, is that uh, when people say, you know, they hate Phil Fish... Um, a lot of times that's not what they're saying. Um, it's, there's more in that statement, and it's that they're saying that they hate pretentious assholes who have gotten famous doing nothing. You know? Right. That Phil Fish is perceived as having this overnight success, and he has gotten more success than he deserved, as if that's a real like thing. Like, he didn't earn it. He didn't earn it. Um, because, you know, his first game became this indie hit. Well, the you know, truth is, is actually it's his third indie game. Uh, it wasn't his first game. There were two he released uh, before it, but that doesn't get remembered. He has a good thing in there, too, where he compares it to Nickelback, you know? Uh, people say, I hate Nickelback, and people hate Nickelback with such a passion. Um, but their music isn't that bad, you know? It's boring, trite pop that's mass-produced by a label, you know, that's calculated to rise up the charts. Um, and Nickelback are complicit in that. They have signed the contracts with their studios to produce that kind of music yeah. and do that. And so that when, when somebody is like, I hate Nickelback, it's not so much they hate Nickelback, they hate this music in this industry system that produces the kind of acts that Nickelback represents, right? But you right. don't say all that, you just say, I fucking hate Nickelback, right? Yeah, fuck those guys. But the difference between Nickelback and Phil Fish is Nickelback are complicit and getting paid for their actions in this scenario. Yeah. Whereas Phil Fish is internet famous. Right? He's not real famous in the super money, super rich, I've got people that handle this shit famous. Your mom doesn't know who he is. Exactly. But you get the same level of expectations put upon you. So anyway, he does some really good videos. Um, he did a decent um, Gamergate type video. Um, it's like, why so angry, Jack? Or something like that. Um, and it wasn't about the people instigating, it was the people getting pulled into that shit. Yeah. Um, and, and sort of the susceptibility to that. Um, and he did pretty well kind of explaining most of it. And then the third video, or the last video in the series, um, he sort of gave some bad advice for dealing with it. Well-intentioned, but not researched, right? Right. Um, and actually got contacted, and then he turned around and contacted more people to understand how he fucked up, and then he made like a seventh video of, ignore my sixth video, um, I've made mistakes, and I always, I always thought that was a really good thing, you know, for him not to get defensive about his last video of like, I'm trying to help, like, I'm on the good side of like, okay, I did fuck up, and I need to fix it. Um, so he did a good video on, he did the best video, I thought, on, uh, breaking down Life is Strange. Uh, because Life is Strange, he, there's a lot of videos where, like, Life is Strange is like, the ending doesn't work. The ending is bullshit. The ending takes all your decisions and says, fuck that, A or B. Right. You know? And he comes at it with, like, 
if that was the case, it's like, yeah, it's cheap, and it, it felt like all my decisions didn't matter. But it wasn't an easy decision to make. I had to think about it. And I can't say that the game failed if I had to sit and think about it, you know? Right. Um, and so he's like, now I'm on a quest to break it down. Uh, and he had a really good setup for it that the first two episodes were this um, teenage uh, coming of age queer awakening type Jane Eyre type story, right? Yeah. Where there isn't an antagonist the antagonist is society. You have to become an adult, and an adult means being responsible in the eyes of society, right? Sure. And it's all about how uh, the hero deals with that, or chooses to not deal with that, um, and how much they want to retain of uh, their childhood ambitions and that kind of thing. Then the next two episodes, our fucking Danny Darko, full-on Twin Peaks, time travel, mystery, uh, Twilight Zone shit, right? Yeah. Um, and what he thinks that, whether they intended to or not, uh, the designers very cleverly said, what if we take two different genres and instead of blending them, Put them on a direct collision course with each other. Run these two fuckers into each other and see what happens. And that the ending isn't so much... Um... The... Choice that you make at the end. It's really asking you... Which one of these two options do you want this game to be? Do you want this to be Jane Eyre? And growing up and accepting responsibility? Well, then you travel back in time, and you let Chloe die, and you accept being an adult. Uh, do you want the Twin Peaks, crazy mystery, tornado destroyed this city, we don't understand all this shit? Then, you know, you, you don't go back in time, you rip up the folder, uh, the photo. Um, I thought that was a really good, clever, um, insight into, uh, what made that game interesting. Are you still trying to figure out where you need to go, or you know yeah, where you need to go, I, just how to get there? I'm trying to figure out where I need to go and what I need to do to get there. Because every place that looks like an open path is blocked off by something. Mm -hmm.